Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual duelist here, and big apologies. I did say I was going to do this on Saturday. Um, unfortunately, I got pretty sick this last week, right towards the end, and ran out of pre-taped stuff before I felt well enough uh, to get back down here in the studio. So, as uh, as of today, uh, we are going to kick the spotlight this week because uh, what I promised was I promised that we would be going over this deck yesterday. So. We're going to do that today. And then in a short time period over the course of today, we will have these additional two builds. These are all three times built from using just the cards in their portions of the structures. And again, if you're curious how I figured out which cards those are, just go in your box. You'll see exactly which skill they said, as well as the deck list. So that's what we did. That's what we used. That's what we're here for. And this week, I'm going to have all three of them today. So I'm probably going to put about an hour's time period in between each one. So, um, yeah, just keep checking back. Uh, let's start with Gay Guardian. This was requested to be the first one. So Mokuba, big, big shout out to you for picking it. And then uh, let's just go ahead and read the skill card. So activate this during the main phase. Shuffle your entire hand back into the deck. Add one level 11 monster card from the deck to the hand. And if you do, you can special summon up to two level 7 monsters with different attributes from the deck and or discard, with their attack and defense values becoming zero. Their effects will also be negated. While you control a Gay Guardian monster card, this skill gains the... or the, Sorry, the Gay Guardian will gain the following effect, which is once while this card is face up on the field... When it is targeted for an attack, you can change the attacking monster's attack value to zero until the end of the damage step. So, essentially going to give Gay Guardian the same effects that Kazijin, Suijin, and Song of the Thunder all have. Um, and just giving it to the Gay Guardian. So again, really cool sp uh, skill card. And again, correct me, but I don't think I'm wrong on this. The only 11 star main deck monster card currently in Speed Duel is the Gate Guardian. So at some future point in time, and again, maybe towards the end of GX, uh, we might see this being used for something like Ubel since it goes 10, 11, 12. Um, but again, that's kind of unnecessary considering the way the Ubel works. So I don't know, we might see another use for this card. Now, since this makes the deck uh, like super consistent with Gate Guardian, uh, you only need to have the one copy. And of course, if you guys really want it, I could foil that out, but not today. Uh, we'll save the foils for when we actually go into building uh, like the end game variant for this. And again, this cannot be normal summoner set, must be special summoned from the hand. Uh, you do this by attributing one each, Songa, Kazijin, and Suijin. So again, skill feeding directly into just playing this big boss monster. And again, it's not too bad, 3750. This will be the second strongest, I want to say, uh, main deck monster card in the game. Uh, maybe not, because I guess Obelisk and Rainbow Dragon are tying at 4,000. So, again, he's, he's definitely up there with the powerhouses. Um, and it is what it is. So, when it came to the rest of the split, the way that I decided to do that was uh, three copies Songa, uh, three, or sorry, one copy Suijin, and one copy Kazajin. Now, the reason for this is because we need to summon one, then we need to activate our skill card, and we know we're going to play the other two. So again, as long as we don't discard it, we know we're good. Um, and the reason we went with the Songa is because we're going to go with three Kaiser Seahorses. Now, when we were doing the considerations for this build, uh, me and Celestial sat down and we said, look, we get to summon any two that we want. Um, and again, for the people that are playing box format, like a uh, like building the decks and then just kind of randomizing who gets what when you play, uh, anybody doing that type of battle cube, you're going to want to put your best foot forward. And unfortunately, or I suppose fortunately, uh, Songa is the strongest of the three gens as well as having the strongest of the three double tribute monsters. And what I mean by this is Kaiser Seahorse's effect. This card may be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a light attribute card. So in this case, we play the one Kaiser Seahorse to play into the one Songa. 
Um, the other copies were the Whirlwind Prodigy. And uh, I want to see who's like 14, 15, 14 maybe, maybe 16. It was less than Kaiser Seahorse is the point. An Unshaven Angler for the Double Tribute Water. Uh, same story, different attribute. So again, we just put our strongest foot forward. So the people playing through a box format have a better chance at hanging. Because again, this deck was kind of awkward, kind of bulky due to this many high level cards. Um, in addition, we needed to have a monster that, you know, should the worst happen, we can set and pass. That card is going to be a playset of the stone statue, the Aztecs. It is a good four star with 2k defense. It is very weak on the offense, so never play it that way. The effect here, double any battle damage the opponent takes when they attack this card. So again, it's just kind of fantastic. Um, this is going in a whole different strategy deck that I'm going to be building later on. So I'm, I'm glad to have it. Um, but it is what it is. It's just we needed something to where we could just be like, mm, set pass, didn't open optimal. Um, going into the spells, because we don't run traps, uh, you are going to want three copies double summon. And this is going to be one of the easiest ways for us to perform the Kaiser Seahorse loop into Sangha. Um, and then additionally, the last five, these work in concert. We're going to be using three copies of Soul Exchange, two copies of Tribute Doll. And if you guys feel the need to switch that around, by all means do it. Possibly even dropping one copy of the Stone Statue for another Tribute Doll. Um, I couldn't see making this a 21 card deck. I couldn't see lowering the counts on anything else here. Let's just go over these three effects and explain why they work. Double Summon says, I can conduct two normal summons or sets during the turn, not just my one. The Soul Exchange says that if I'm going to use a uh, monster for any of my own tributing, I can target a monster that my opponent controls, so I can summon the Stone Statue, hit the Double Summon, hit the Soul Exchange, and then offer my monster plus yours. Um, we can do that, or we can pair the, uh, the soul exchange with the tribute doll because they both say we cannot conduct our battle phase and the monster cannot attack during that turn. Either way, it's fine. What's going to happen with the tribute doll? We tribute a monster, and again, we want to use the soul exchange first to target an opponent's monster card so that we know that for a fact that we can offer that. And what we're going to do with the tribute doll is now we can special summon a level seven from the hand that can be normal summoner set. And again, restrict it with it can't attack that turn. Again, this allows us to get into any one of our three gins, the Kaze Jin, the Sui Jin, the Song of the Thunder. They all share the same effect that we're going to be able to give the Gate Guardian, where once per duel, while they are face up, they are allowed to nullify a monster's attack value as it is attacking. Um, but it has to be that this card is attacking, or being attacked. So it is a fully defensive thing. Again, we're probably not going to see too many times where this comes into contact. And if these guys see their way into like more meta play, if these guys end up becoming more of a top tier uh, speed duel threat, uh, one of the easiest counters I see happening, uh, Book of Moon, obvious. Uh, but additionally, and hear me out on this one, I see people playing Bashing Shield uh, because with the initial attack, uh, bashing Shield with something like DD Warrior Lady. Um, we're guaranteeing that, number one, they don't get their effect, um, but at the same time, we're going to be able to banish it. So even if they did try to use their effect, we didn't take any of the damage. It's going to be a nice way to off them. Again, tributing them, soul exchanging. This is all also going to be great. And something I can't wait to use in the next build for this is going to be Card Advance, uh, actually allowing us to stack the top five while getting an extra Tribute Summon. At which point, I'd probably still be riding the Kaiser Seahorses, um, just as well as the Double Summons. And I may drop a portion of this to get this to move just a little different. Um, so again, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you have, uh, consider all of the things. Consider liking and commenting. and uh, Obviously, these things help us get seen. Subscribing if you haven't already. Maybe a notification bell. Maybe you let your friends know. Maybe, just maybe, you don't do any of those. You do one thing for me. You go out there. You try to have a great day. And that's it. I hope to see you guys in the next one. And uh, have a great day.